the smartest guys around are about to break it down like they won the game of militarians. Well, actually, they didn't really win the game at all. Surviving no way to Yes, that's right. We are back here. And Stephen Fishback, I am so happy to be back talking Survivor tonight with you. Rob, I have a prepared statement <laughs> to read to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rob, this is a big week for Survivor, and I'll tell you why. Why? Uh, we have gone this week from alliances having names to alliances having physically associated gestures. This is a huge step forward in the game. I'm so excited about it. You got the Rock and Roll Alliance. <laughs> and then uh, what's what's our gesture, Rob? What's the know-it-all's gesture? I'm thinking like... Yeah, like, uh, like we have an mind. idea bomb that oh, explodes. Oh, yeah. Oh, All okay. right. I like that, too. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> so excited to be uh, back here. Hashtag RHAP. Get your questions in for the Survivor Know-It-Alls on a big week. Two survivors go out this week. Uh, one in epic fashion. One in not the most epic fashion. But uh, we lose two survivors tonight. We'll talk about all of it here with you. Very excited about all of that. Uh, a lot of stuff coming up. Let me just set the stage. Stage here tomorrow we'll have a double exit interview i will talk to b and natalia on the survivor exit interview oh, wow. so be on the lookout be on the lookout for be? that oh natalia on the lookout for that yeah and then i will have i'm very excited uh, to welcome back pg law who will be in the oh. studio your castmate from survivor second chances uh she will be here to talk about everything and we will be live or uh, i'll be here uh in the studio with her and uh we will uh, record some video as well so be on the lookout for that and then sunday burquest will be on the feedback show this week oh, so be on I'm the excited. lookout for that as well hmm. and then of course uh wiggle room to come but steven one week from tonight I will be in Reno, Nevada, part of uh, Run It Up Reno for the Reno It Alls. That's what I'm calling it when Stephen Fishback is wow. not with us in Reno. The Reno It Alls. Oh, oh wow, that's that's. Uh, no, how rude. Natalia be right here? Yeah, you're You'll welcome to join us. Reno and all Natalia here. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, next week, if you can make it out to Reno, Nevada, the beautiful Pepper Mill Resort and Casino, courtesy of Jason Somerville's Run It Up Reno, we'll have a, a great panel with myself, Adam Klein. Tyson Apostle, Boston Rob will be there, Michelle Fitzgerald, uh, <laughs> Steven's friend and mine, the real Coach Wade will be there. So it will be a great panel. We will stream that live on West Coast time right after the episode coming up next week. So Hey, I've got a question yeah. for you. Is Coach actually going to be there? Because literally every time I went to Reno, I would hear like, Coach is coming, Coach is coming, and Coach never came. He's, it was like waiting for a Coach O. He says, he says he's coming, so I don't know. I yeah. mean, uh, he says he's into it. Uh, okay. Yeah, Coach, is, uh, Coach and I are, have, have never been uh, tighter, Stephen, that he has recently watched my season, and uh, he was like texting me in real time as he was watching Survivor the Amazon. Um, I always thought of your season as all stars. Yes. Well, yeah. You know, some people say we, when I say my season, people are always like, "Well, which one?" Yeah. yeah. No, but well, the, Co coach is really he really set the pace for your for literally he set the pace for uh, for podcasts with you because he was on the treadmill when he did it. Yes. So yeah. uh, very excited to be all together with uh, that crew next Wednesday night in Reno. For more information, go to runitupreno.com uh, to book a room at the Peppermill Resort. Use promo code R I U Reno, but it is free for you to attend the live uh, Survivor viewing, podcast taping, and karaoke party to follow. 
follow. Uh, that is of no cost if you can make it out to Reno, Nevada, the Pepper Mill Resort and Casino for running up Reno. Okay, Steven. That is a super fun event. Okay, sorry. Yeah, the be- best deal so in Survivor really Podcasting. Show up at Running yeah. Up Reno. Have a great night for free. Okay, Steven. So, yeah, a, a lot to unpack here tonight, but I think we have to start with this Tribal Council and this was sort of a wild uh, swing of events where it seemed like an open and shut case, but for some reason, and it's not exactly clear that Alec decides to go away from the person who was, according to uh, according to Jeremy, according to also the plan of okay, everybody, all the ladies, let's get you get this person, you get this person. I I thought Al- Natalia was Alec's person. And Alec decides to decide to throw caution to the wind. It's almost like at this tribal council, he's just like, F it. Well, that's the crazy thing. And I really feel like there's got to be something else happening here. Because, you know, it's like on its surface, right? It's a a terrible, terrible decision for so many reasons. You know, he betrays his allies, right? Uh, and, And, you know, people hate flippers, right? They loathe flippers more than they hate people who are against them from the other tribe. So uh, that's going to be huge, you know, not just on his own tribe, but the Goliaths on every single tribe are going to be like, you flipped on us. He gives uh, the tribe majority to the Davids because you've got Carl coming back onto that tribe. And like the survivor res- resume point, I was, I was tweeting this, is so trivial. Nobody cares what you did pre-merge. Like survivor resume only matters right. after the merge. And the crazy thing about it all, so so on its surface, an incredibly dumb move. But the crazy thing about it all is that Alec knows all that. Like he has confessionals where he says, oh man, if I do this, all the Goliaths on the other tribes are going to be pissed. And he's another confessional where he says, oh man, if I do this, Carl's coming over. The Davids are going to have a majority. So it's not like he's making some terrible decision ignorantly. He's making this terrible, terrible decision like with full knowledge. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And so I guess I have a couple of questions of like, uh, what was the killer argument? I mean, was it A, what Elizabeth said to him on the beach about the resume? Was it B, what Davey said to him about potentially working together? Or was it C, that Natalia was, for whatever reason, was so intolerable for him that he said, I got to get rid of her? I really think it's got to be C, you know, and I wrote a little bit about this in my blog, but, you know, Natalia was obviously feeling incredibly paranoid. And so she kept on going to everybody else and asking for reassurance, right? She said to to Kara, like, I don't, you know, I'm I'm nervous. Are you going to flip on me? She said to Alec, you know, like, are we really together? Like, really, really, really are we together? And I think when you are saying to somebody else, like, I'm afraid I need reassurance, what they're hearing from that is, I don't trust you. I think you maybe had to get me. And so I may get you first. And I think that for Alec, maybe he thought like, you know, there's always a little bit of like the new toy syndrome when you swap or you merge. You're like, ooh, who are all these new fun people? Like, what can I do with them? Mm-hmm. And then like the old toys are sort of like, eh, like those old toys, like I've been playing with them for, for two weeks already. Um, and I, I think those probably combined. Stephen, then could you explain the difference between uh, Natalia's paranoia and Gabby's vulnerability in this episode? Because it seemed like that they were treated very differently and also received very differently. But I feel like that they're sort of not super far apart as emotions. That's a really great call. That's a really, really, that's a really interesting distinction. Like what is... What is the distinction there? On one hand, you have Natalia, who's who's really irritating people. I mean, and then maybe it was because, I mean, I guess it's there. They're basically saying very similar things, aren't they? Like uh, Gabby's asking for reassurance too. I mean, what, what what do you think? Well, I think that one is more of like a call for help. One is like a distress yeah. signal of like, Christian, help me. I'm scared. I'm not as good at this as you are. I don't know what to do. Can you protect me in this game? Can you reassure me that I'm not going to be the one if I get voted off? Whereas it felt like that it was more of a conscious decision for Natalia to say, hey, I'm feeling insecure. I am going to control this. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to, you know, to whip the votes and make sure one of these people has to go home. So she was actually less passive. And I think that maybe it was the kind of thing that ultimately uh, irritated Alec to the point that he said, I got to get rid of her. 
Yeah. And it also could just be, you know, I mean, the vagaries of the individual personalities, right? Like on the one hand, you know, you know they're expressing themselves, like you say, in very different ways, right? And Natalia is being much more uh, for, uh, uh, forward, I guess, aggressive about it. And, and, and Gabby, obviously more, um, you know, she's, she's weeping there, you know, it's, it's so it's, it's just the way. And, and then you also have Christian, right. Who's maybe a little bit, you know, different, more, maybe a more sensitive soul than, than Alec is. Um, so, so I also think there's gotta be something else, you know, I like, we see these things as, there's these three Goliaths and two Davids. Why would you be so stupid as to screw up a good thing? But like, it's, you know, ultimately it is like a network of individual bonds and individual connections. And so, yeah, I mean, I guess they just, you know, probably he just felt like enough with this bossiness, you know, and, and, and like, let me just try to present a counter argument, which is that, you know, you're, you're at this murder at this swap tribe, you know, Tyson Apostle, winner of uh, Survivor Blood versus Water, has always said you've got to like treat your swap tribe like it's your new tribe because you have no idea what's happening on the other two tribes. And then you have Natalia, who's like bossing everybody around and making it hard to work together. Um, so maybe there's you know an element to where he feels like if we're going to go forward as as five, like let's do it as five and without all this conflict. I don't know. Maybe that's. Uh, I, I don't know. What do you think? Give, 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 give me some uh, Sister Nino witticisms. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I have any uh, witticisms, but just the decision that Carl was going to be coming back to this tribe just seemed to loom so large over this yeah. vote. And, you know, I, I'm interested uh, to, uh, I'm going to talk to Sunday Burquest on the feedback show. In Millennials versus Gen X, we saw this exact situation play out three times where the group that was in the minority from the original tribe ended up uh, knocking out a person that was in the majority in each of these swap tribes and we see it happen again and I'm just very interested to know why does this seem to keep happening on Survivor where the bigger group seems to keep eating itself in these swap tribes I really do think there's an element of like you know you're like the new people seem exciting you're in a dominant position so they're like currying favor with you you don't feel threatened and afraid because you're in a dominant position right people who are in a position of power feel com comfortable to make big moves you know the new people don't seem like threats mm -hmm. and you know and then so you, you're focused on your existing threats i mean it's just like it's this it's this like tale as old as time with uh you know survivor groups in dominant positions whether it's a, the majority on a swap tribe or it's the majority at the merch they're much more more inclined to turn on themselves take out their existing problems than they are to sort of like bond together because they don't know the new people the new people are uh, you know and, and you know and it's easy to kind of like start to fantasize about like oh i've got this ally with davy and this ally, ally with elizabeth uh, and but I know Natalia is not going to work with me. So like maybe I can like plot something magical down the line. Well, Stephen, going back to Survivor Second Chance. Now, you in the uh, three tribe part of the game, I believe you guys threw a challenge to then. Well, whatever. I you know, didn't yeah, care yeah, if yeah, you yeah, won. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys voted out somebody who was an original uh, Bion tribe member as opposed to either <laughs> Spencer or Kelly Wigglesworth. So could you talk a little bit about that decision? Yes, it was a terrible decision. I was not on board with it. Everybody really wanted to do with it, and I regret it. To well, this what day. was the reasoning behind that again? Um, well, obviously, we weren't going to vote out Spencer. Both Jeremy and I really knew and really we really liked him. Uh, I think it was the idea because that he was Monica somebody from outside again. And this is obviously different with a returning player season where that's yeah, somebody, yeah. hey, we want to work with this person. So, as opposed to strangers, as it was in this case. Yeah, I mean, I think in that, you know, it's like, you, I think it's a really similar parallel, right? Where on the one hand, we had Monica, who nobody trusted from the beginning of the game. She seemed really schemy. Like we saw her, I mean, this is slightly different, but we saw her like scheming with Spencer and scheming with Wigglesworth all the time. So like, we know Monica is untrustworthy. We know she wants to flip up, flip on us at Emerge. And then we have like, oh, these fun new people. Like, oh my God, it's Kelly Wigglesworth from season one. Oh my God, it's like my friend Spencer Bledsoe. You know, so it's like, they're so exciting in their newness. And like, I know Monica is dangerous. I, so I, I actually do think that's a pretty good parallel. I mean, granted, there are like specific differences, but, but uh, you know, I think there's, there's, that's not dissimilar from what might have uh, influenced Alec to flip tonight. Okay, I want to ask you about this tribal council because it was really a great tribal council. And so we started off where it was Elizabeth versus Davey. Were they on the same page? They ultimately voted together. Were they just trying to throw Natalia off the scent there in your mind? Or was that something, a plan that came together once Alec whispered to Elizabeth? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, I, 
I assume like you got to assume that that was like a, a last minute move by Alec, right? Otherwise, like why he's why is he going and whispering to to but Elizabeth nobody like whispered that? to Davy. Yeah, I mean, I think that Davy was voting Natalia, right? But probably he communicated to Alec like, hey, I'm voting Natalia no matter what. Like, just let me know. Or maybe he and, and Alec were like had already kind of resolved on it. But it, if it's not a last minute plan, what on earth is Alec doing? Yeah. And so he whispers to Elizabeth, who in Natalia's mind is the target. And Natalia correctly says, I'm, I, I'm not cool with this. I'm not cool with what just happened. This I was I, I am not on board with this. I am this is not good. And then we see Alec then whisper to Kara. And then she ends up uh like saying, like, well, he says it's okay. It's 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 uh eh. It's it, uh, he says it's well, the yeah, plan is still the same. So yeah, like well, what what should Natalia? It did seem like there was something Natalia should have done. Maybe even something Kara should have what done. What could she Kara, have done? I kind of felt for Natalia in that situation. What what could she have done? That's my question too. Like like, do you think she's on like, the plane? The, like, the plane's like, going hold, down. Like, hold, hold, yeah. What well, what is there anything to say? Unless that she's like, hey, everybody, you know what? Let's vote for vote Alec. Alec. Alec sucks. Yeah. Alex sucks. Vote for him. But that's such like that's such an impossible audible. Like that would be like such a crazy call shot because then you're if you're wrong and Alec was just going along with your plan the whole time. You look but like why? The why talk to Elizabeth? There was no strategic unless that he felt like, oh, Elizabeth has the idol. I need to then try to make her feel comfortable. Well, this is this is this was like my biggest lesson from Survivor Cambodia, which is that when things smell funny and like people are behaving in ways that do not make rational sense, then they are definitely doing something that like you do not want them to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with that because in Survivor the Amazon, I never felt like anything was off. And then right. the first time I ever felt like, oh, but this field doesn't feel right was in Survivor All Stars. And I got voted out. So, yeah. I, because when I lost the first time, it was like, you know, kind of an open and shut case. It was like, I didn't win the challenge. Jenna was going to vote me out. I got it. But, you know, I, I hadn't had been blindsided before to know what that felt like. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, to go back to Survivor Ghost Island, I do think, you know, you need to trust your gut. But I think her gut was the only thing, no, this is no. wrong. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I don't like this. Yeah. Yeah, what could she do? And you're right. There's like nothing. That's It's such a crazy position. Like, she could see it happening. And like, Kara's like, ah, whatever, you're fine. I mean, it's not Kara's butt on the line. Um, you know, obviously she doesn't want her ally voted out, but it's different when it's you in the hot seat versus like someone else. So his pros probably fine. Yeah. Um, and I was a little wondering, like, did Kara know? Did Kara was Kara? Just, I don't think Kara. She, I don't think she knew either because in the coming attraction for next week, and I don't know how much it's canon. She talks about that Alec blindsided me in the preview for next week's episode. So she seemed like that it was a surprise to her as well. Oh, I definitely think it was. I mean, I just can't. I mean, what do you think? Is there some ration? Do you think this is a terrible move by your lights, right? Like this is, I think this so. is a bad decision. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm almost surprised. I actually like I wrote my blog thinking that like people would be more uh, out like appalled by what seems on its surface, like truly a horrible move. So I wrote like a blog being like, guys, let's not pile on Alec too much. But actually, there's some debate about like, wow, what an interesting big move. Who, why who, are people saying that? Is that what you're seeing? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I saw some like, uh, you know, or maybe it's just more enthusiasm about the season. Like, more, like yeah, the, wow, I, what a it was great TV. So thank you, yeah. Alec, for that. We we, we <laughs> yeah. appreciate it. It was a really it was a really great blindside and a really great reaction from Natalia to walk, oh, yeah. walk off. Like, uh, you know, she's like, "Did you know? Did you know? Like, uh, where, where do I put this thing?" Uh, it, was, yeah. it was great. A great reaction from Natalia and re a really great TV moment. But it's just on so many levels, especially with Carl coming back and Carl has a, a relationship with Davey as well. So Alec in this new tribe, even if you feel like that, okay, there's going to be this new paradigm that's going to be created at best. Maybe he's, you know, third on the totem pole. Oh yeah, no, it's, and, and it really is a bad he's move. Probably you know, you, fourth. Yeah. I mean, and you don't know, right? Like what, when are our swaps these days? Swaps are, are pretty early. I mean, I guess like they've got probably a solid week before they, uh, they merge, but yeah. 
Well, they might swap back. They'll probably swap back, right? So it's early chronologically in terms of they swapped on day 10 where, you know, I, I think that this is one of these situations where the show was going to probably swap at, uh, you know, do this swap at 16. Yeah. But because B ended up leaving the game early on this, you know, early in the episode cycle, it seems like that maybe there is going to be uh, like time wise, they'll be in this group a couple days longer than anticipated. Uh, l- let me ask you about B. Was B, uh, and this is like a, l- a little bit in the weeds, but uh, was that a medical evacuation or a quit? No, it was a quit. It was, Jack and Jeff was yeah. very clear that it was a quit. Um, you can tell when they weren't happy about that. Yeah, and, and understandably, like it makes sense for her, right? Like I don't want to jeopardize my life and my career, but um, um, someone was tweeting, uh, you know, like they shouldn't cast athletes because like they're they're going to be super paranoid about small injuries, which could be career ending for them. Yeah, it was an important distinction. You know, we talked about it last week, how they made a lot of mention of it. I did think that the show treated it as like uh, she's cuckoo. Like when she talked about it, she kind of got the dodo music talking about like, oh, it's my MCL. I can tell when there's an issue with my knee. And then obviously, you know, the show knew that she was going to ultimately because Jeff went to her. Okay, B has an announcement that she's going to tell to the group but uh yeah jeff was very clear about this this was you know she had a choice survivor medical was not pulling her from the game she was pulling herself from the game and the david tribe of all tribes for this to happen on in fact retroactively every medical evac in history in in survivor is a a david (laughs) yes yes they were all davids all along mike barassi david huge david yeah huge david mike barassi major major underdog okay Steven, then let's talk about a couple of these other tribes uh, that we got to see. Actually, uh, one other thing, actually, before we move away from the Orange tribe. Steven, should they have tried to throw the challenge? If you were if you were Carl or Elizabeth, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Elizabeth or Davey, was there any wisdom in trying to throw the challenge to try to get Carl? Wait, for Elizabeth or Davey to throw the challenge in order to get themselves voted out in Carl's place? <sighs> Yeah, you know, Please explain. what do you what do you say? So I was a little confused in terms of how this was going to work in terms of Carl coming back into the game. I was under the impression that they Carl was going to join them at tribal council to vote. I was not under that impression. Yeah, you felt you that you, this was exactly how you thought, thought it was going to be. And should Carl have gotten to watch the tribal council? Because I feel like we've seen it different ways. Yeah, either way. I mean, I didn't I didn't I, I actually was surprised by that. I thought maybe he would just rejoin them the next day. But I thought that that worked. OK. All right, Stephen, uh, let's talk about some of these other tribes. Uh, let, let's talk about the new tribe, our, our green tribe, Tiva. Tiva. We got our yeah. dream matchup of Christian yes, and Christian John and Hannigan. John. Oh, my God. And the bromance is real. Like that little bantery interchange was so good. You know, between them about, oh, you know, obviously I don't have access to the web portal right now. Like John was giving, I mean, like, you know, like I, you know, you kind of have preconceptions and I, I admit, you know, and I, I probably am like Gabby with some of my preconceptions about bros, but you know, like I'm a, a John convert. I'm a John vert. Um, he's so clever and so on point. Yeah. No, I mean, he's a super witty guy. So I think that yeah. he was a good foil. Oh, I did. I, yeah, I didn't really. I mean, like, you know, I, I've only recently learned that. Okay. Steven, uh, J- uh, John and Christian on the amazing race. Are you shipping it? Oh, my God. I would love I think to that see probably, that. Well, I think that it would probably, I don't think John would do it at this point. Well, would you, I mean, I, would they more likely, he's like the, the heavyweight champion. Yeah, of the he's world, got a lot huh? going on. I mean, I think that wow. they're, they're lucky that he did, did Survivor. Seriously, I mean, what what a what a guy. I mean, speaking, I mean, on you know, one hand, we're saying like, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't cast athletes, but here's somebody whose uh, career is his body. Here he is, you know, he yeah. could, you know, uh, it take could take him like quite some time. Not that I know anything about putting on muscle, but I think it would take you know quite some time to rebuild uh, the physique after you're out there for a certain period of time, if that is what your job is. So. I think that um, you know he's been he's been great, much better than expected. Oh my gosh, he's fantastic! I mean, he, can can John win? Like, I know everyone can win, but can John win? I mean, well, what is the reason that you feel like he cannot? You feel like he'll be too big of a threat at the merge. Too big of a threat at the merge. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's possible, I and mean, we've seen you know alpha male types uh, win. At the, you know, win the game. So I don't want to say it's impossible, especially if the Goliaths have the numbers. 
Would you be happy with a John Wynn? Like literally the biggest Goliath that we were talking last week about who's the most Goliath of the Goliaths? Like John is the most I mean, I don't care if a David or Goliath wins. If he's a likable character on the show and he plays a great game, you know, why wouldn't I be happy? I'm I'm rooting for a John Wynn at this point. I think he's actually four episodes. He's been fantastic. Yeah, he's 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 my favorite. Yeah, and Christian obviously. You know, Christian is my heart. They they have been uh, two standouts, and it's been uh, great to see them together. Um, In terms of the uh, tribal politics, there, do you feel like that uh, Gabby is in big trouble? I don't think so because it really does seem like Christian is going to protect Can he? her. You know, I mean, in what? So what will he say? Let's vote out Dr. Allison. We don't even know what's what's going on with her. Um, yeah, poor Dr. Allison yeah. can't even get the screen time in the five person tribe. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, like at the tribe swaps, there's a lot of people to uh, a, lot, a lot of storylines. Yeah, to, to be fair, yeah, she got a bad draw in terms of people that yeah. are eating up the camera time. Yeah, like probably the like four of the of the five biggest characters on the show are on that tribe. <laughs> yeah. With Natalie being the fifth. Mm-hmm. Sure. So unfortunately for Dr. Allison, but you would think that maybe if it, it was going to go in that direction, you think we would have at least, you know, heard from her. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, uh, it's, it, it really is interesting. I mean, that tribe is got is, is really strong, right? Because like most survivor challenges are a mix of skills. You need mm-hmm. like someone who's really strong and someone who's really smart. And that tribe has that. Right. So, so you have like uh, two of the best athletes and then also two great puzzle solvers. So whatever the combination is here in the five person tribe and Gabby did a great job in uh, being the person who was leading the blindfold crew tonight. So, uh, Oh yeah, th- that is a, a Swiss army knife of teams. Yeah, so, uh, someone on Twitter, Sophie, uh, texted, um, what uh, the there's very few challenges that uh, really reward being a technical writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the few. Um, then yeah. we have our purple tribe, the uh, Jibini tribe. Jibini? Uh, I, and don't I, don't, I don't follow the names. Yeah. We got to see that uh, Natalie is still being Natalie. Natalie's yeah, going to Natalie. Gonna Natalie. Yeah, and we got the uh, Rock and Roll Alliance. Those are the big storylines there. One of the storylines from last week was how Angelina got the vote changed from being to Natalie to being to Jeremy. I I would have loved to have seen a little bit from Angelina talking about how like this really paid off for her because she saved Natalie last week, and now here is Natalie in this group. But it still doesn't seem like that there is a bond between uh, Natalie and Angelina that we've seen on the show. I, it, it really did seem like Angelina was more interested in doing it, you know, to get rid of Jeremy than she was in it, interested in, in it to, to save Natalie. But it right? feels like a missed uh, opportunity to go to Natalie and, and Natalie ne- not, has not necessarily uh, appreciated uh, that type of, Hey, like uh, I got you. Uh, like I didn't need you to well, get me. From Natalie's perspective. Yeah. It, it might not have been Angelina, right? Like we know that she wanted Jeremy out. We know that she was like, we saw her strategizing against Jeremy. Like from Natalie's perspective, maybe she got Jeremy out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we saw Natalie uh, telling everybody what to do. I mean, that uh, she does seem to know what to do. Yeah, it's easy to know. Oh, you got to build that shelter, light the fire, stick with guys, the fire. Guys, guys, the fire. Going. Make it high. Make it bigger. Put that, <laughs> yeah, put that stick yeah. in there. What are you guys doing? Come on. Yeah. We got- it's not lit yet. Fire is still not lit. Now it's lit. Now the fire is lit. Okay. Yeah. Now you... Uh, the other, uh, pairing that we got to see in this group, uh, we got to see, uh, Mike and Nick together and, uh, Nick has another alliance. Yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, they are the rock stars. Rock stars. Real rock cute. Stars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that alliance name? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Disgusting. you know, Nick- <laughs> Yeah. Nick, Nick, Nick's uh, really what, what, what's incredible about Nick is that he has no self-consciousness about how terrible his alliance names are. He just goes with them. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and, and his enthusiasm for them uh, is really is really uh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, is Nick running the risk of will he be able to remember the names of all his alliances? <laughs> you know, yeah. survivors he, gets tricky. You know, it's like you're 38 days in, you can't remember your phone number. Now, can he remember all these alliance names? Yeah, the thoroughbreds. So does he even remember being a thoroughbred? <laughs> 
what do you think like like real talk here Rob what do you think about like the gestures I mean I, I don't love the uh, the rock stars uh, to be honest I think it's a, a, a little bit you know uh, Bill and Ted but isn't that like the appeal of it, like how corny and dumb it is. Like, oh, you, you, do you think that to, Nick is going for ironically f uh, funny? I don't think that's what he's going for. I mean, I, but I think like that's sort of like the delight that Mike has in it, right? Is like he sort of sees the. I'm not sure if Mike has a lot of delight in it. He's like, I think he's just sort of going, saying, okay, all right, whatever. Nick <laughs> wants to make an alliance. I guess we're the rock stars. Well, fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. If he wants to make an alliance with me. Um, yeah, I thought he liked it, though. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You're probably right. He didn't really care one way or the other about being the rock star. <laughs> I think he would but rather have really... made an alliance than not made an alliance, but I don't know if he's necessarily... He didn't seem like, yeah, finally, I've got, a, yeah. I've got an alliance going with Nick. We're the rock stars. Now, is this sort of like the inversion of like Nick's alliance with, with Christian? Like, Does Nick seek out a type? Yeah, how so? What do you mean? Man, it's like the, the nerdy guy in this tribe. You know, he's going for the nerdy guys. Yeah, so... You feel like that this is like some sort of like a mirror image where he is like, okay, well, I'm gonna make alliances with the uh, nerdy guy wherever I wherever I find one. Yeah, I mean, it seems like he's making alliance with every single person he meets. Stephen, it doesn't seem he doesn't seem to be that discerning. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. We, we got to find out how many alliance nicknames there are at the end of this season. I mean, it would be a fun montage at the finale where you know if Nick is the winner, it's like we see the montage of like I've got a new alliance. It's called the Thoroughbreds. Got an alliance called Mason Dixon. Got an alliance called the Rock Stars. Got a new alliance. But this is this is a lot better than like Phillips thing, right? Of like in like it's basically what what Andrea was saying at our live show, right? What Phillips did was he invited everyone to be a part of the same named alliance, which was Stealth R Us, and then the people who were like the founding members were like, what the heck? Like what about our alliance? Nick just creates a new named alliance with everybody, mm -hmm, right? And Philip gave out nicknames to people in that alliance um, right. as a way to sort of like endear. But people don't necessarily always feel good when you give them a nickname. I liked being the wizard. Yeah, but I'm sure that you've also gotten nicknames uh, that you did not appreciate. Are you working through some trauma here? Is there something you'd like to share with the group? Uh, no, I don't really have a ton of uh, <laughs> nicknames. Uh, the Rob that sucks, but I kind of embrace yeah. that. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Uh, listen, with, with a name like Fishback, there was a lot of teasing in elementary school, but I've, I've come to terms with it. Yeah. Steven, did you feel so much like Elizabeth when she talked about at Tribal Council that uh, she was no so nervous she thought she was going to poop her pants? <laughs> no, I can't say that I did. I have no connection with that statement. Yeah. So the other big moment from the episode was that Carl uh, went to exile and he got the idol nullifier. I'd love to talk that through with you as uh, this is the development of a new twist in the game, the idol nullifier. And I don't know if you've uh, spoken about this at all before. Do you uh, like the concept of the idol nullifier? I love the concept. I think it's really, really great. I think it'll it'll make, you know, because I mean, gosh, like there have been so many seasons where someone has just been like invincible because of their idle play and it's made the game a lot less fun. And uh, just the fact of the, this, you know, A, it could be if it's if it's used correctly, it could really light light things up. Um, and then B, um, you know, in the future, when people know that there's if there's a potential for an idle nullifier to be in the game, I think it'll complicate further strategies around uh around idle play so i i really dig it because it's definitely been a little bit tedious where like you know nine people want someone out and they've got an idol like sometimes that can be very exciting once but then when it happens like four or five times it's like you know time, time to go yeah so i was a little confused in terms of how this was going to work i heard uh jeff probst explain this to josh wiggler in first one out and i think i got a little more confused it sounds like i go to the urn and I think that if somebody is going to play an idol on you or you are going to play an idol, I just write back down fish back on the right. thing and then put it in there. And then if anybody plays an idol for you, Jeremy stands up, he plays an idol for you. You stand up, you're going to play an idol. An idol cannot be used on you. That's from what I, I saw in the episode yeah. tonight. That is my understanding where I thought originally that what Jeff was saying was that not only did I have to write on the thing who had the idol, but I thought you had to say who they were playing it for. 
Oh, I don't think so. I think it's just like who who's getting who's like who is being nullified. That would be way too much. Otherwise, mm -hmm. yeah, it would be. Uh, and, and, a lot. and also, it would be like an easy workaround. You could, like give it to your friend and be like, "Hey, play this on me." Mm -hmm. Okay, and you would think that there might also be drama when it's going to be used at every single one of these votes. Where I don't think that Survivor will show us necessarily it going into the thing where we can see somebody like before every single vote. Carl might say, uh, "Maybe I'll use my." I don't nullifier tonight and then if somebody stands up at a tribal council this season and is going to play their idol then there's also going to be a beat of is jeff right. going to go in there and pull the idol nullifier out uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you think you think every week they're going to have carl like say say the same thing just just so that they well, get especially if somebody's talking about i'm going to play my idol tonight i think we'll also yeah, see yeah. carl talking about like well maybe i'll use my idol nullifier tonight so i think yeah. that's going to be another level of uh will he or won't he or and all that stuff all right so uh steven i want to start to get to some of the questions from the listeners of uh, robin's oh, podcast Any, anything else the, anything else you want to touch on no, this is a really fun episode. You know, a lot happened once again. You know, a lot of like fun relationships. It's a great season. Yeah. Josh Wiggler, Josh Wiggler tweeted like best season ever. I mean, you know, we're four episodes in. I, I think he you know, might have been a little hyperbolic. I don't know. Josh Wiggler, I think we can agree, is completely wrong. No, no, I obviously he was being hyperbolic, but I do think it's 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 on pace to mm -hmm. be one of the best seasons ever for sure. Yeah. And I think it's been really fun. I don't know. Uh, for whatever reason, I feel like that the expectations were uh, a little bit low coming into this season. And I certainly think that that helps. This was not a season that was especially hyped. And so I think that people came in, not really expecting a lot from this season, but I think that it is really delivered. So uh, kudos to survivor. Yeah, yeah, and and the editing has been fun, and uh, I'm with Josh on this one. I think it's on pa on pa on uh, on path. Yeah, on path. And we've seen one of the best good starts ever. to seasons that go south, and we've seen bad starts to seasons that get better. But it's always better to start good than to start bad. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. We'll see. Uh, before we get to our questions tonight, let me just uh, quickly thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast, Lisa Mattress, L-E-E-S-A. Stephen, if uh, you are in the market for a new mattress, and why wouldn't you be? Because you will feel great. Nicole and I just started sleeping on a Lisa mattress, and we love it. Uh, the it's even It hurts even more that my kids wake up so early in the morning. Try it out for yourself for 100 nights at lisa.com slash RHAP. Get $160 off the Lisa mattress or $235 off the luxury Sapira mattress. Free shipping. Try it for 100 nights. That's at lisa.com slash RHAP. Promo code RHAP. Let's get into our questions here tonight, Stephen. Start it okay. off. Okay. Okay, I, I, yes. Uh, and Curtis wants to know why does Jeff say fifth person voted out of the game? Did he forget that Pat and B weren't voted out? Uh, I, I think you can forgive him uh, in the excitement Good of catch. the moment. Yeah, yeah. Fifth person eliminated. I think I think we're I think we're okay. Yeah, uh, you know. Tough. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. All right. Becca wants to know. So why did Natalia and Takara vote differently? I, it had to be like a split vote, right? Right, like an idol split vote. I think that they each thought. Right. They had had insisted to um, to Davy that uh, Davy should vote for Elizabeth. They insisted to uh, Elizabeth that Elizabeth should vote for Davy. And um, they I think they were probably planning a split vote. You know, when you're in that, in that power position, you think everything's going to go according to plan. And um, yeah, the end. Well, I think that it's still unknown to us. I think that probably well, I'll ask Natalia about it in uh, the exit press exactly what she thought was going to happen. That who knows that maybe Alec ended up telling uh, Kara to vote a specific way for whatever reason. Like, oh, I was saying uh, it's going to be Davy tonight, and that's why I told Elizabeth that it's going to be Davy and vote for Davy. And maybe then, then Kara, when she looked at Natalia, was like, oh, uh, "You're good, you're good, but it's not you." So yeah. maybe that was the case. Maybe that that so it was that Alec gave Ka you know Kara new information, but it didn't ultimately change the result. I. Uh... Yeah, that's possible. I, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm betting on the split vote. Okay, but I believe. I believe so. All right. We'll see. All right. So, Stephen, let's take another question. This one is from Patrick, who wants to know: Do you think that Alec whispering was all just for show, or was it strategy? Well, what is the show? 
Yeah, the only show is like freaking Natalia out. Mm-hmm. So I think it has to be strategy there. I think I think he like made a last minute decision. I mean, and th- I think that's actually an element of it, Rob, that we didn't really discuss, which is that at tribal council, you're so heightened, you're so paranoid, everything is like running through your mind. You just make like these, you, it's easy to see how someone could make a bad, crazy decision in the moment. Especially like how old, Alex Young, right? He's a, he's a kid. Is he that young? I don't. I don't think he's like a twenty-one. I, I could be. I, I thought he was in his mid twenties, but I don't know exactly the case. Um. Well, he is twenty-four, so that's pretty young. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. But he seemed to be, you know, very thoughtful about the decision. I mean, we saw him on the beach talking with Elizabeth. Elizabeth said that look. Alec is, you know, very deliberate about what he says. Uh, Alec doesn't do anything, a- anything rash or anything that's not premeditated and say anything outrageous ever. So uh, we have to go by what Elizabeth is saying. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I think that's but the thing is, like, you can add up all of the factors right in your thinking and still not have a clear choice, yeah. right? Like you, you still, you just because you know everything that you need to consider doesn't necessarily mean you know what to do. And I think that's, you know, that's the challenge with any decision in Survivor or in life. And uh, so like he might have not made a really clear decision. Okay, this is a question. This is going to be a little bit of a hot take. Uh, what This is one from uh, Cade. Um, Cade, all right. Cade says, can Jeff please put a stop to this annoying whispering at Tribal? I don't like it. Now, Rob, you're also someone who's a little bit worried about too much whispering. Well, I think I've been worried in the past about the toothpaste, you know, being out of the tube. And, you know, I, I, my concern, I think, in the past has been more of like the let's get a group huddle going. OK, all right. I need to talk to my people over here and everybody's over this and then everybody's over on the other side and then people getting up from their seats. I don't know if any did. Did Alec get up from his chair or did he just like yeah. lean? A, a, you know, he, no, he, got, he got up, the, you know, one on one of like, hey, here's the plan. It did nothing bothered me from this tribal council. But well, what's good is that, like, I think Jeff is really good at drawing attention to it. Yeah. So it's like, Davy, what's can going do on that. there? Davy, how do you feel right, about right. this? So you can do it, but you're going to have to like, there's going to be consequences for do it. it. At your and I think expense. that's really cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have an issue with the huddle where everybody is, you know, uh, breaking off and going off with their tribe? Like we yeah, saw I, I, didn't, I don't love that. I agree. I, that's sort of like, you know, it the was group huddle fun. It was amazing huddle. that in that one vote, but I feel like the, the Malcolm, the Malcolm vote. Right. And like uh, that we, you know, people shouldn't be up, be able to get up and have like sidebars with like, can I talk to these people over here? Can I talk to, okay. All right. Let me get you. Okay. You sit down. So that that's too much. Yeah, no, I, I agree. This, was this, fun. this is drama and it's drama because, you know, you've got Natalia's reaction, right? Being like, what is going on here? I am not in favor of this. Mm-hmm. OK, uh, this is a question from Amanda Fallon. Do you wish that we got to see the moments of B talking through her decision with Dr. Joe? Or are you glad that we got the yada yada? So I don't know if necessarily that she talked it through with the doctors as much as she might have just talked it through with the producers. Right. And um, I mean, it's possible like, that she got the doctor to like take a look at her knee and they they confirmed what she was saying. Well, but uh, I don't know. Necessarily. I think if the doctors confirm what she's saying, I think that the doctors probably would have pulled her from the game or at least presented it in the way where it would have been. Well, you can do further damage if you stay in the game. And I think that they probably would have wanted to give her that out. Uh, my sense is that the survivor doctor said, mm, I think you're good. You're good. And because, I mean, especially in the post uh, Beast Mode Cowboy era, I, I think that the survivor doctors are pulling people at the first sign of a long term injury. Yeah, I, I think the Beast Mode Cowboy thing in this is, is very different, right? Beast Mode Cowboy was about to die. And uh, you don't B- think they have a quick hook where we've seen people in the game before saying like, like, I, no, please don't take me out. I want to stay. But yeah, right. When someone has an injury that precludes them from advancing, but we've also seen a lot of people move forward with injuries of this magnitude, right? Especially knee injuries. Uh, you know, Abby had one in Philippines. Um, Missy had one in San Juan del Sur. So we've seen people who have like advanced in the game with injuries that would inhibit them in the game, but but we're not, um, you know, we're, we're not life or death injuries. So it's. I think it's very possible the doctor said like, 
here's where you are. Like you can move forward with this. It could cause further damage to your knee. And she's like, I'm an athlete. Like no way. Okay. All right. Uh, what about this question from Mr. J Mackey, Stephen? Uh, Jay Maggie says, we saw Gabby crying, feeling she was on the outs in her new tribe. If they lost immunity, do you feel she would have gone home or Christian for being a bigger threat? Or would we have seen the Goliaths turn on their own on this tribe as well? Interesting question. What do you think? What, where We were sort of alluding to this earlier, but I don't think we came up with a great conclusion. Who goes home on that tribe? So I think it would be Gabby at this point, but, you know. Things could change where either Gabby has uh, really earned her keep in the tribe where they feel like they want to keep her around or Christian is able to convince some of his new allies that it's the case. Or maybe we'll see something where Dr. Allison could potentially emerge or Dan with his idol as being uh, kind of a threat. So I, I think that uh, it's not necessarily a, a where I'm feeling like Gabby is going to be the next person to get voted out. I think she's more likely to make it to the merge and then they don't go to a tribal council. Yeah, but I do think that she's probably the most likely if they went to a tribal council. Yeah, I, I think that tribe is is going to be pretty strong uh, for for reasons we were saying before. Can I bring up something uh, also that was interesting from this episode? And I don't know how many times you have to get uh, ask Jeff Pittman to answer this question. That we saw a tribe win reward in this episode, and we did not see the tribe uh, enjoy that reward. I, I so mean, nice. How, so great. Does that happen a lot in the sort of uh th you know three tribe you know where we have one challenge and we don't get to see the tr the the tribe that gets the reward enjoy the spoils of said reward? Yeah, that's been happening for the last couple of seasons. It's been really nice, like how like we don't have to okay, like they're all having a great time and they're all so happy and they're all eating their you know brownies. Mm -hmm. Like they've they've been cutting that out a lot, and, and even sometimes on a food uh, reward, I, I feel like that that uh, I I don't really, oh yeah yeah. Because I feel like that we tend to get the reward earlier in the episode, or at least if there's one challenge, we have it earlier in the episode and maybe see the tribe like, okay, we're going to get strong now. We're, gonna, we're eating our snacks. No, no, it's it's in the last couple of seasons. I think they've been, unless something significant happens at that, at that, uh, at that, at that reward, like they, they have been sort of uh, yada yada and really getting straight to the Didn't the miss meat. it. Yeah, yeah, they're very happy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do a couple more questions with Stephen Fishback. Uh, what does Jessica have to say? All right. Jessica wants to know: Did you like the names of the new tribes? If it was two tribes, what would you have thought of D D David and Goliath? <laughs> uh, so we're gonna merge the names. Together. Like, listen, uh, get ready for the merge, okay? Because uh, David or Goliath is a very strong possibility for the merge. Now. Um, I think this was a question that people were concerned about early on of, okay, if they go to three tribes, what will they name them? Uh, they Survivor was able to think of names on the fly. So it, it, it worked out. And so I think it was fine. Yeah. Um, all right. James wants to know, how do you guys think this new advantage in the game affects the idols that Davey and Dan have? Will this advantage be a dud or do you think it'll succeed? That's a good That's question. A good question okay. Rob. All right. Steven, so I think it will affect Dan's advantage more than it will affect uh, Davy's idol because uh, that Dan's is public and Davy has not told anybody. Also, Carl is an ally of Davy. And so if that uh, Carl is going to use it, I think he would be less likely to use it on Davy's idol. Yeah. If the, if the advantage nullifier is played, does it go back in the game? I don't know. I, I suspect that we might see it just come up the one time. If this season was called like Advantage Nullifier Island, which, you know, non-zero possibility of a future season. So I would say yes, but I think that this might be a one and done. Yeah. Unless it gets played uh, like I, next I, week. And then, oh man, I hope a oh, one and done for the season, not one and done for like the show. For the, okay. Yeah. For the, for the season. I, I think that, because oh, yeah. uh, I, I would imagine Carl's going to hold on to it for a little bit. Yeah, there, there was an advantage nullifier in um, Australian Survivor. Right. Uh, I haven't seen season three yet, but season two, it was a, it was a big it was a big move. Right. And it, it was, was played a... differently in Australian Survivor, where you were able to play it after somebody used the hidden immunity idol. Here, you have to play it before the votes are cast. Yeah. What do you think of that? Of those two rules? Like, do you think which do you think is the better rule? Like, should people be like, should should it be like someone plays their idol and then you can decide, do I want to nullify that or not? Or do you like it as is where you have to decide in advance? I'm nullifying a potential idol play uh, and then maybe maybe that's wasted. So 
I like the American idea here where you have a better chance of wasting it because I think that much like being able to play the idol after the votes are revealed in sort of like the Tyler Perry idol or the, you know, God idol version of this, I think it's too powerful to be able to use it after somebody is using the hidden immunity idol. Yeah, I mean, the only advantage to the Australian way is just like we're like in this like idle crazy universe where like everyone's got idols all the time. And then it's, so it's nice to be like we are there's definitely a way to cut through the red tape here. So I think that Survivor is very much in the business of they want to see people use things incorrectly, as you may or may not know. And I think that they get a lot of mileage out of that. So the idea that this could be used and also could be used incorrectly, I think that Survivor is just as happy to see it used and wasted as opposed to used and have it be a home run. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like something like this isn't flashy because you're not like, you know, it's not like me like stealing. Like, I'm stealing Joe's vote. You know, there's no like there's no like big huzzah of like doing the doing the nullifier. Right. If it gets it's played vote, and, and then is a wasted, I think that nobody would know about it. If I remember from what Jeff told uh, Josh Wiggler in the preseason. So I, I guess it could be kind of a dud. Do yeah. you think it will be used correctly? I hope so. I got I got a lot of hope, uh, a lot of faith in Carl. Yes. So are you uh, are you saying that you are going to? Uh, want, want, I know you want to make a wager this season. <sighs> Can't wager on okay, this. Okay. Not feeling strong enough about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Stephen, uh, this is one from Cindy. Tell me if this is something that bothers you or not. Uh, Jeff had two baskets above. I saw this a lot on Twitter. One for each original tribe, uh, which guaranteed that all three new tribes would have a three to two Goliath advantage and a David goes to exile. Do you think it was no more way. fair? That, uh, you, so you say that this is uh, preposterous? I think the advantage, I think the buffs, I'm assuming the buffs were men and women. We don't know. Uh, so somebody two, will have to go bad. through and do a you know a shot by shot examination. But I did see a lot of people jumping to that conclusion on social media. But we'd have to go back and uh, study the tape. Well, but but if if that were the case, then Jeff would be determining that a David for sure got the. Um, it wouldn't make sense that they would want that. You know, like for the show, it doesn't make sense that they would want Goliath to always have the advantage. You know. If Jeff were handing out the buffs by tribe, it would also make sure that that one that it was a David who got the no buff basket, right? That that David got the Carl basket of of going uh, to to exile. Also, doesn't make sense because if a if a Goliath got that, then there would one hundred percent have been at least one tribe with a David advantage. So I don't I don't think that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's hard to speculate. We have to go back and watch the tape to see exactly. I would I would almost I would wager. You know, I, I would put, I would give very strong odds that it was a male female split and not a, a tribe split. Okay, all right, uh, Scott. Do we have any more questions tonight with Stephen or uh, Lorenzo? Says, do you think that Davy Elizabeth Carl should now try an intentional Matt Singh to get Alec and Kara out? Stephen, what do you think of that? Uh, that you know, Alec has surrendered the numbers advantage to the David tribe. Do you think that? that Davey, Elizabeth, and Carl should get on the same page. Now, we've seen that Elizabeth was part of that vote to send out Jessica, so it's not necessarily that this group is on the same page. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing. You know, like, yes, if the Davids were like one monolithic block of love, but that was really what ha what got fractured when um, they voted out Jessica instead of Larissa, right? It was like they split the tribe down the middle, and now you don't have like some great big David block, <laughs> David voting block. Um, so I don't think it makes sense. You know, Carl and Davey aren't necessarily so loyal to the whole David group. And uh, separately, like what we were saying before about how when you when you tr when you swap tribes, you've you've really got to like build some trust with your your new tribe because you really have no idea what's happening on the other tribe. So I I mean I think the three of them should enjoy their new power position and. Um, yeah, don't screw it up, guys. Okay. Hashtag monolithic block of love tonight here on Survivor <laughs> Know It All. Uh, Steven, who got the fishy tonight? You know what? I only gave a rotten fishy to Alec. Oh, interesting. Because I thought that it was a bad move, but it was also the, the successful move. Um, I did spend a lot of time in my blog sort of talking about like trying to explain why he was thinking and why maybe it wasn't as terrible. But because like on the surface, it looks like a very bad move. Could it and be I, as simple just, as that 
maybe he likes Kara more than Natalia and wanted to be on a tribe with just her and not Natalia in the way. So, and he would rather have like Carl around than Natalia in that, in that scenario. People have different motivations, Steven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Non-zero chance of that. Really? You think that that's, I mean, in the sense that there's like a non-zero chance of literally anything. I mean, Look, um, that I think that there's a non-zero chance. May maybe this guy is saying, hey, I, I don't want to be on this island with Natalia. I'd rather be here with Kara. But he could have been there with both Kara and Natalia and then just like voted Look, out. Uh, we'll have yeah. to. Who knows, Stephen? Uh, the, you know, the world's a mysterious place. I guess that's true. Why do we even talk about anything? It's like, how can you choose between Wendell and Dominic? The world's a mysterious place. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, but I am asking you the, your particular opinion uh, yeah. in that instance. But anyway, Stephen, so no, okay, I, I, won't get it, I won't get into the, I, I felt like you could have gone uh, either, you know, uh, co-fishy for Elizabeth and Davey even. I didn't think that necessarily... Yeah, I mean, maybe I thought about it. Uh, co fishy for Elizabeth and Davey. Um, they certainly did a good job of, uh, you know, sort of stirring Alec up. Um, but it seemed to be as much Alec's decision and his frustration with Natalia as it was anything that any one person said. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the resume thing like really resonated with it. I mean, <laughs> Elizabeth saying on day 11, who, you know, the person who's sitting at that tribal council might be determined here tonight, like, Boy, is that is that just yeah. ridiculous? Because I did think that Davy and Elizabeth did do a good job in this episode. They did a great job. They did a really great job for sure. Okay, Stephen. So uh, what else tonight? Of course, uh, follow Stephen Fish back on Twitter. Be sure to read his blog on People dot com. Uh, let's talk about what's coming up here. Uh, Nick Iadanza has uh, some more Survivor Australian season three uh, deep dives, and he's got. Sharn on the podcast. Uh, be sure to check out uh, Nick's deep dive with Sharn on the Rehap Ups. I will have the exit interview tomorrow and I will speak with B and Natalia on the exit interview and get some answers about this tribal council as well. So be on the lookout for that. And then uh, this week in Survivor History and then PG Law here in the studio. Very excited to have PG back. She's always a great guest. She knows her stuff and uh, looking forward to uh, catching up with her on Thursday. And then uh, the RHAP B&B &B, where the tabulator, Kurt Clark, will join Mike and Liana to play some games. Always a treat. Be sure to check that one out in our Survivor Survivor podcast feed and the wrap ups feed and then why Natalia lost why B lost as well uh, be sure to check out David Bloomberg and uh, Jessica Lewis in the why blank lost and then Sunday Berquist will be joining me we're going to do the voicemail feedback show earlier in the week I've cleared out the weekend so yeah Friday you know, it's really coming up this this weekend big week big weekend coming up so I had Rob Sesternino's 40th birthday yes yes Oh my God, you're so old. Yeah, I'll let you know how it is, and then you can tell me in January. <laughs> you're so yes, old. Yes, yes. So, Stephen, uh, we don't like that term. Okay, yeah. it's not. You're so Goliath. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, be sure to get your feedback questions in for Sunday uh, by Friday. That's confusing. I know that's confusing, but get your questions in for the feedback show by <laughs> Friday morning. And you can also email questions in for PG as well and for Sunday, uh, survivor at robhasawebsite.com. And uh, hey, want to become part of the Rob is a Podcast patron community? We're having so much fun. Had a great patron five for five talking about everything going on in the world of Rob is a Podcast uh, with the First Lady of Podcasting last night. And of course, course uh we take your calls every week on the facebook friday podcast as well so much going on rob has a website.com slash patron to support all of the podcasting going on at rob has a podcast steven fishback all right next week i will not be getting to chat with you about the episode unfortunately oh uh, uh. but be sure to read steven's people blog yeah, just, you know, why not? Why not? Yeah. And then, look, if you got, uh, you know, a super hot take or anything, I'm sure I'll, I'll give you a call. 
Okay, great. That sounds great. If there's a hot take, I'll let you know. All right. And then uh, we have one other programming. And then in two weeks, uh, it will be Halloween. We will have a know-it-alls podcast for you guys, but we will not be live on Halloween night that I have some uh, trick-or-treating uh, commitments uh, uh, with my family. So, What are you dressing as? Uh, we are all in on The Incredibles. Oh, which one are you? Are you the, the, the invisible one? You are? No, I, I am oh. Mr. Incredible, Stephen. <laughs> no, really. Which one are you? <laughs> yes, Stephen. Are you like the nerdy friend next door? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, my uh, my youngest son is, says, uh, Dad, you have to shave your beard because Mr. Incredible doesn't have a beard. And you have to say, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, mom doesn't that's, want that's me the, to. That's the, di- that's the difference between you and Mr. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stephen, uh, <laughs> what are you, Johnny Mundo over there? <laughs> No, listen, I'm not Mr. Don't Incredible. body shame me, okay? I'm the, that's I'm not the, it's 2018. That's not cool. <laughs> no, I'm just saying you don't need to try to be something you're not. You're beautiful the way you are. Well, what what is Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> so we will have the Know It All's podcast for you guys uh that Wednesday night. We will just not be live coming up in two weeks. So a little bit of a wonky schedule coming up, but hopefully it will uh, not impact your enjoyment of everything going on. And we've got a really great show coming to you from Reno next week. So thank you guys so much. Thanks so much to Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes. Take care, everybody. Hashtag monolithic block of love. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>